everyone, and welcome to Building Bridges TV show. We are broadcasting from A9 television channel in Tur Istanbul, Turkey, in cooperation with the WTPN, with the People Network, an American network reaching to millions. Ms. Varda Halit has a blog on the Houston Chronicle website named The Young American Muslim, and she describes her blog as a fresh perspective on Islam today. She is writing on topics related with Islam, and she is in connection with the Muslim community in the United States. So, Ms. Halit, welcome. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm it's, doing well, thanks. Thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to have you. And we will have some questions for you today. And uh, very uh, interesting and good topics, inshallah. Yeah, to what extent is the fact of creation accepted in the United States? And what kind of activities could be carried out in order to reach the Muslims and, uh, as well as the Christians and Jews uh, for the f uh, on the fact of creation? How can we reach the people of the book also? Uh, well, uh, just to answer that question, I think uh, one really important tool that we can use for that is interfaith projects. Uh, I know in the U.S., um, the interfaith movement is gaining momentum and has been gaining momentum for several years now. So, um, you know, I think that all groups such as Christians, Jews, Muslims are involved in these interfaith efforts, but obviously a lot more work can be done. So right now, you know, they get together to help out at soup kitchens or they do work on college campuses. Um, and so it's really great to have these different people interacting in a peaceful setting and working towards productive causes. And um, there's obviously a lot of room for improvement, but I think I would like to see these kind of projects continue. How do the American Muslims approach the people of the book? Yeah, I can, I can answer that. Too. Yes, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, because... Uh, I do a lot of uh, talking online with different people about this subject, and the uh, the one thing that a lot of people in the U.S. misunderstand, yeah, and it really surprises me that they do, is that they think that Allah is a different God than they worship. Uh, a lot of the Christians here in the organized religions, I know a lot of people I've talked to, they say, well, I don't pray to the same God you do. That's why I don't believe in Islam. And I asked him, I said, well, what God do you pray to? Do you have a golden cow or what? <laughs> and, and they say, well, no, but, but I don't pray to Allah. I said, well, you pray to God. They said, yeah, I pray to God. I said, then you pray to Allah. Uh, I said, you know, I said, what the difference, the, the miscommunication we're having here is that we're talking different countries and different languages. I said, but in all languages, Allah means God. And God in all languages means God. It's the same God. We're all worshiping the same God. It's just different name uh, because it's a different language. And Allah is, can, um, to me, can it, Allah cannot be used in plural form, which is I think is is the best word for God because when you use the word God, it can be used as gods or whatever, such as back in Roman history. But Allah is one. So we should behave definitely according to the Quran. In the Quran, uh, Allah orders us to treat them very nicely. And Allah says there are sincere believers um, between among the, and, and the Christians and the Jews. So we believe the same Allah, we believe the same uh, in the same God, we love the same prophets, and that's the way the, the approach should be. And in, in fact, the verse just uh, Bulent read that yes, uh, Allah orders to invite them to the oneness of Allah, and Allah also says in other verse, argue with them in the kindest way. So if we do that. <laughs> And the Christians behave uh, against, uh, uh, like uh, the, uh, it is in the Bible, there is also compassion, mercy, love, tolerance in the Bible. Inshallah. But love the same prophets, the world will be an uh, arena of the peace in the 21st century. We know there is radicalism and extremism, and not only among Muslims, but also among Jews and the Christians also. And this is one of the most important threats to the, to the entire world. I will go back to what our guest was saying and that education is a lot of the problem that we're having uh, on, on all sides, uh, even on the Muslim side and uh, Christian and Jewish and, and even non-people non of the book. I mean, there are a lot of people that are under a lot of misconceptions and even uh, Muslims that do carry out things in the name of Islam are uneducated as to their own face. And I've been lucky enough and, and blessed enough to come in contact with a lot of very good Muslims and a lot of good friends with you guys at A9 and Harun Yahya and uh, a lot of the friends I have and in reading the Quran uh, that I, I would agree with probably the majority of everybody here that education would be key 
to getting past a lot of this. Yes, and uh, you're, you're both completely right. The education is very important. And in the Quran, which is real Islam, according to the Quran, a Muslim has to be compassionate, merciful. And according to Quran, murdering one innocent person is like murdering entire humanity. So mm -hmm. this is definitely unlawful according to the Quran, and it's unlawful according to Christianity and Judaism also, uh, in killing innocent people. So terrorism, Islam denounces terrorism. There is compassion, mercy, love, tolerance, and justing, and protecting the needy. And in terrorism, there is only killing innocent people. For example, in these attacks, innocent Muslims were killed in these buildings, innocent Christians were killed, and innocent Jews were killed in these buildings. And also the uh, unbelievers, they were innocent. They were, not, they, they, were, they were not harming anybody. So it is definitely unlawful. There is no justification for violence and terrorism. And in fact, there is an order also in the Quran uh, from Allah. Allah says, do not go extremes in your religion. So radicalism and extremism is incompatible with true religious morality. But the only treatment of this disease is through education, of course. And media should stay away from sens sensationalism and uh, to stop this problem. But we see radicalism is very common in, in all around the world, bigotry and radicalism yeah. uh, and uh, extremism. You know, I'm excited to see what, um, where Islam is going to go in the future. We obviously have a lot of work to do, but I feel like if we you know, keep the central message of unity um, in our faith at the forefront, that you know, we can accomplish great things for our religion, not only uh, within the Muslim community, but um, building bridges, uh, with other faith communities outside of Islam. So. And we chose the necessity of good Muslims and good people with wisdom coming together, which will generate power. And uh, the, if you summarize, and it's, it's a necessity Allah showed us, Allah shows us, it's a necessity that the unity of the Muslims, the unity of all the Muslims coming together will generate, uh, will uh, solve all these problems which is happening in the Islamic world, and which is also disturbing for not only for Muslims, but the Christians and Jews also. A model, for example, which is defended by uh, Mr. Adnan Oktar, a Turkish Islamic Union model, which embraces Christians and Jews will be solution to all the problems which are happening in the world. Fragmentation and division is haram, actually. It's against the Quran. And uh, hating other Muslims, this is also unlawful, and it is against the Quran. Yeah. Hating the people of the book is against the Quran, is unlawful. So uh, we'll be need to put Quran in life, inshallah, inshallah. And with, wrong, with, uh, with a true interpretation, and this unity, of course, will have a leader of its own, and which will like everybody, will accept it by everybody, with a central authority which can decide what is compatible, what is not compatible uh, with the Quran. And with, with this will stop and cure the radicalism, the bigotry, the wrong interpretations, the wrong ideas, and will clean up all these traditions. And because Allah says Quran is sufficient in the Quran, Allah says in many verses, inshallah. So we will have a golden age like the age of the bliss of our time of the Prophet Inshallah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in 1400 years ago, there will be wealth, there will be progress in science, technology and arts in a golden age with peace, democracy, freedom of thought, freedom of worship, Marshall. all around the world, inshallah.